Christian witchcraft. That's right. Christian witchcraft. Some people are committing witchcraft and they don't even know it. They don't even have a clue that that's what they're doing. So let's go over here to uh, Psalms 1. Let's get right into this. Psalms 1. It says in Psalms 1, chapter 1, verse 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Let us pray. Father God, I come to you right now that you will please open up our eyes and our ears so that we can see and hear your truth. And please prepare our hearts to receive your truth and to keep your truth. In Jesus' name, we love you and we thank you. Amen. But his, verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, he shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now, I want to back up just a little bit. The chaff is the skin on the seed of the barley. Back in the time of Jesus, they would throw that seed up into the air, the wind would blow the skin off, the actual seed would drop back down, they could grind that up into a powder and use it accordingly. So the chaff would be raked up and thrown into a pit and burned, see? So, that's the chaff. And the godly, and, and therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Well, wait a minute, you mean the ungodly are not going to be judged? No, the ungodly are not going to be judged. It says it right there in the first book of Psalms. It says right there, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. So who's going to be judged then? I'm going to tell you who's going to be judged. You and me. Doesn't the scripture say that judgment starts in the house of the Lord? Absolutely. That's who's going to be judged. Did you make full proof of your ministry? That's who's going to be judged. Right? Let's go to Galatians. Galatians 5. Actually, first I'm going to 1 Corinthians 3, chapter 3. And I want to read this scripture here because it's kind of dealing with the same thing that I'm dealing with. Today's, or this evening's lesson is called Christian Witchcraft. And it's stuff that people are doing on the daily and they don't have a clue that they are performing witchcraft. Right? So check this out. It says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able, for you are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife, Divisions. Are you not carnal and walk as men? Now he's referring to something else here. Uh, de denominational divisions within the body of Christ is what he's dealing with. But these things called envying and strife that cause divisions, these things uh, cause uh, anxiety. And sometimes anxiety can overtake us. And it is a very real foe if we allow it to overtake us. Anxiety actually is a, a spiritual thing. It is the fruit of the enemy. Our arch enemy old sleuth. That's right. Because anxiety is not of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Not at all. Let's go on over here to uh, 
Uh, Galatians. Let's go to Galatians. Right here, Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Now, Christian witchcraft, we wonder, how is this? Well, let's read. Let's start reading at chapter 5. Let's start reading at verse 10. I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased? I would they were even cut off which trouble you. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, if you have anxiety so bad that you have to go to a doctor and talk to a doctor about prescribing you some type of a anti- depressant, then you're barking up the wrong tree. Number one, we just read back in the book of Psalms, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, the very thing, first thing that we should do is consult our doctor if they're asking for help concerning our mind and our heart. If they believe in the real Hebrew Israelite Jesus. And if they believe in Ecclesiastes 12, verses 13 and 14, I believe, or 12 and 13, where he says the whole duty of man is to fear God and to keep his commandments. Because if they do, then we are equally yoked and they can counsel us concerning the ways of our mind. And what would be good for us. Now, if that person is not concerned in the way of our God and our King. And they are prescribing antidepressants. Some of these antidepressants. are concocted the same way witches used to brew 
their concoctions. I don't have, I'm not able to pull any of this up, but I challenge you to pull up the origin of the word pharmacy. And when you pull up the origin of the word pharmacy, you're going to see that it is attached to witchcraft and sorcery, medicine. What are some of the other words, guys? Cure. Cure. Now, if we read our scripture, this Bible tells us that we are 100% to be depending on our God for every facet of our life. So that means that the enemy has an artificial out there to make you comfortable when you feel weak. Even though these scriptures say, when you are weak, he is strong. Even though these scriptures, well, let's just cover. Let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 1. Let me see if I can find it here real quick. 2 Timothy 1. You go look at word of pharmacy, and it comes out of a, 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 I believe, a Greek word or a Spanish word that is pharmacia, and it is attached to witchcraft. So, when you go and you get these mood stabilizers, you are actually, when you're taking Xanax, that's right, I said Xanax, I'm calling it out. You go look at what that word means. That is nothing but a sales pitch. You go look at, uh, what are some of these others that they prescribe? Ativan, Vicodin, Xanax, uh, what are some of the others? Uh, Oh my goodness, I don't even know. But there are so many narcotics and barbiturates out there being prescribed today. And it is witchcraft. And we think just because a doctor prescribed it to us that it's legit and legal. But little do we know, because we have not been reading the scriptures and we have not seek guidance and understanding from our God and our King we are practicing witchcraft and it's a witch doctor that prescribed it to you. They're just not wearing the black hats with the cones and the black dresses anymore. They're wearing surgical clothes and white gloves. So, you know, we got to look at what's going on. It's the same old spell, just a different day. Now, let's look at where our help comes from. When we get under stress, and we're feeling so much stress, we think we can't handle it, that we need to go see these doctors, and we need to get these barbiturates, and these antidepressants, and, and all these mood-enhancing pills, when we don't, all we need is the Holy Spirit and our God. Because Jesus says over here in 2 Timothy, where am I at here, 2 Timothy 1, 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7 says, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not you therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, of his per prisoner, but be you partakers of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. He knew your mission. He knew your name. And he already numbered the hairs on your head before the world began. Now, you think he can't take care of us in a time of need? Does he not say in his word that he will never pour on you more or allow more on you than you can bear? Let's go to Philippians. Go oh, on over here to Philippians. Let me show you something over there in Philippians. Philippians. Ephesians. Philippians 4, 13 says, Philippians 4, 13, uh, where are we at? Philippians, yeah, Philippians, that's Colossians. 
I didn't lost my book. Colossians. Where's Philippians? 4 and 1 verse right here. Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Now if you can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens you, then why are we turning to barbiturates and antidepressants? Why aren't we praising the Lord God and getting into His Word and studying and practicing and putting on the full armor of God that we can withstand the wails of the devil and trust in Jesus, right? Now, we've already seen two witnesses there in 1 Timothy. God's not giving us a spirit of fear, but confidence, a sound mind, and love, right? Then we see over at Philippians where we can do all things through Christ Jesus, but we have to believe those things. Right? There's no witchcraft involved in that. Right? Now, for you breastfeeding mothers out there, let me share a little info for you on this tip. I did a little research just so I could have a well-rounded lesson on this topic. And did you know that the barbiturates and antidepressants and any type of medication you take concentrates in your breast milk? So if you're taking something one or two or three times a day, and it takes anywhere from, we'll say, 5 to 15 days to get out of your system, then how many of those pills are concentrating in your breast milk as you're feeding that baby? Now, that's not an attribute of the Holy Spirit, right? That's definitely not an attribute of the Holy Spirit. I got some family, when they run out of their medication, they get rather hateful. Now, that's not an attribute of the Holy Spirit. Now, is it? So, what it, what it would be an attribute of? That's an attribute of an evil spirit. Witchcraft. That's why people get so irritable and so angry when they don't have their sorcery or their concoction or their brew or whatever they call it nowadays. All right? Now, let's go over here to uh, 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 Psalms 104, back to Psalms 104, let's go back to Psalms, back to Psalms, and we're going to go to 104, 104, Psalms 104, Psalms 104, Father God, please let this camera have enough time on it to record this whole lesson, Psalms 104, verse 15 says, and why... Oh, wait a minute. Verse 14. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and the herb for the service of man. Wait a minute. Did he just say the herb for the service of man? Ha! That's exactly what he said. Let me read that again. He causes the cattle, the grass to grow, or he causes the grass to grow for the cattle and the herb for the service of man that he may bring forth food out of the earth, and wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengthens the heart. Well, I'll tell you what, right there he says he gives you herb, he gives you wine, he gives you oil, and he gives you bread to make your heart merry. What more do you need? He gives you earth for the service of man. You do the math. You're going to take a man-made concoction that is brewed up the same way witches used to uh, brew up their sorcery and their, their alchemy? Or are you going to take a plant that God gave us, or plants that God gave us, called herbs and oils and breads and wines and the fruit of the tree, and the Word of God, and the anointing oil of our Father, and heal your body that way. So it's up to you. You're either going to do it with the Holy Spirit, or you're going to do it with witchcraft. But I promise you, witchcraft brings a lot more side effects than the medicine cabinet of our Father God. Let's keep reading and look at some other things that he's given us to service this body that we live in when it's under stress or duress. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Genesis 1. Genesis 1, 
verse 29. Genesis 1, verse 29 says, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. There he said it again. He gave us all the herbs of the field that bear seeds. And the fruit of the tree in which we make wine out of. To minister to this body. What does he say in his word in another place? He says, drink a little wine to make the heart merry. He says strong drink is for a dying man, don't he? I mean, he gives us clear-cut instructions on how to take care of this organic computer according to the Spirit and not man. He says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be not conformed to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do we be transformed by the renewing of our mind? Through the Word of God is how. We test these things. Right? Let's go to Proverbs 27, 27, and there'll be one more after that, and we're finished. Proverbs 27, Proverbs 27. So, so far, we learned that he's given us all the herbs, he's given us wine, he's given us fruit, he's given us oil, he's given us bread. We know that the word of the Lord heals us. There's anointing and power in the word of God that heals this body as long as we spend time with Him. Now let's look at here. Proverbs 27, verse 27 says, And you shall have goat's milk enough for your food, for the food of your household, and for the maintenance of your maidens. For those of you who don't know, the maidens of your household is your wife and your daughters. Now, it didn't say drink goat's milk for the maintenance of your sons. It said to drink goat's milk and eat goat's milk for the maintenance of your maidens. Now, I challenge you to go look up another word, maintenance. It's imperative that we induce and induct the diet that God gave us for this organic computer. Because He made this organic computer out of dirt. And everything else I've been reading to you that he gave us to minister to this computer is made out of the same dirt. But he said, this is what you do to keep the heart married. I gave you this for the maintenance of your maidens. I gave you the herbs of the field for the service of the man. I give you oil to anoint your heads, anoint your feet. You anoint yourself anywhere you need anointing. I give you bread to make the heart merry. And most importantly, He gave us His flesh and His blood. And I hope and I pray that that blood is on the doorpost of your heart. Witchcraft in the church, be careful when you go get that script filled. Because when you go get that script filled and you take that back to your house, you could very well be ministering to demons. 